Hello, and welcome to this presentation by INE of Understanding Common Network Applications. I am Keith Bogart, and I'll be your instructor for this series of videos. So let's talk a little bit about the objectives of this series of videos. You know, what am I hoping that you as the learner will get out of this? Well, number one, I'm hoping that I can provide you a high-level overview of common application characteristics and mechanics. What does that mean? So this, if I go forward a little bit here, this course is really designed for the entry-level CCNA learner, the, the person who is just starting out learning the, the CCENT, otherwise known as the ICND1 topics. Someone who has little to no networking or computer knowledge. Um, you know, I've known plenty of people in my day who, you know, they, they use their laptop strictly for, you know, browsing the internet, you know, looking for news, placing orders on Amazon.com, you know, reading their Gmail. But other than that, when I start throwing terms at them like Telnet, HTTP, uh, DNS, they have no idea what I'm talking about. And I've had plenty of students in my CCNA boot camps who've come to me when I teach that who don't even know what those terms mean. And so this is really geared uh, for that section of an audience. People who want to know a little bit more about, okay, when I bring up my browser, what's really happening in the background? I don't need to know the gory details, but what makes web browsing work? What makes email work? What's going on underneath the hood? And certainly when we get into the role of networking, a very common application you're going to be using a lot in the world of networking is Telnet. And what's going on when you Telnet to something? What does that really mean? What's that protocol doing? And so that's what I'm going to sort of be covering in this series. I'm also going to talk at a high level of some sort of general characteristics of, of network-based applications, some categories they fall into, you know, certain silos that sort of describe how they work in general. And we're going to be covering that in a series of videos. So my agenda, I'm going to start real briefly with a video on what do applications have to do with a CCNA. Most people who are studying for the CCNA or maybe have heard about a CCNA, what comes to their mind is routing and switching. And if I'm thinking about Cisco routers and Cisco switches, why would I have to know anything about applications? Isn't that something that the server guy or the server gal is going to do over there? I'm the routing and switching person. Let the server person worry about the applications. Well, even if you're fortunate enough to get hired into a company where you can specialize in just the routers and just the switches, which is rare because most companies these days will also want you to do a little bit of stuff on the servers also, you have to know something about applications. You can't be completely ignorant about some of the most common applications that are out there and what they're doing. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm again going to provide an overview of TCP and UDP. And then the applications that we're going to dive into is the domain name service, DNS. We'll go into some categories and types of applications, and then we'll look at email, web browsing, and telnet. So those are the video breakdowns that we're going to be having in this particular course and what we're going to be talking about. Now, as far as prerequisite knowledge is concerned, don't really have to have any. Uh, this is a very fundamentals, low-level CCNA course. So other than being able to open up a computer, turn it on, and maybe get into your web browser, that's about it. So I'm not expecting that you really know a, a whole heck of a lot here for this class. As far as Q&A is concerned, uh, this class right now, as I'm recording it, I am also delivering it to a, a live audience as well, a live internet audience. And they have the ability to ask me questions as I go along here. So in these recordings, you might see me responding to questions that are posed to me from that audience. However, you, who is watching this as a recorded session, what do you do if you have a question as I'm going along? Well, certainly my Number one response to that is I recommend that people go to the INE online community, the IEOC. And if you've never seen the IEOC before, let me just show you briefly what that looks like. So I'll pull this over here. So if you go to your, the members dashboard, and if you're watching this video, I assume you have a members account. So if you go to your members dashboard here, in the upper right corner where it says connect, if you click on that arrow, you'll see that the first link is for the IEOC. That's the INE Online Community. 
You can click on that. And then here in the upper left where it says CCIE forums, click on that. Now you might be saying, wait, hold on a second, Keith. I'm not studying for my CCIE. That's okay. That's just the title of this link. We have a lot of forums for things other than CCIE. So just click on CCIE forums. And then if you have any questions regarding stuff that I'm talking about in this series of videos, I'm thinking it'd probably be most applicable to post those in like just the generic CCNA forum. Uh, so if you scroll down, it's about three quarters of the way down here under CCNA and CCMP forums, you can see here, it's about the sixth link down, CCNA. And you can just click on that and then you can write a new post. So go ahead and put a post out there about you know the question that you have. And there's hundreds of people that, that look at this thing. So guaranteed within less than a day, you will have an answer to your post. That's my preferred method because that way the knowledge is being shared. Other people get to see your question. Other people get to learn from the answer in addition to you. Now, on the rare chance that you post a question here and you get no answer whatsoever. Doesn't happen very often, but let's say that happens. Let's say you, you post it there and you wait like two days and you haven't heard anything back. Then in that case, you can see right here, I've provided my INE email address. So feel free to reach out to me directly via that. I've also provided how you can connect with me on Twitter. Uh, so you can post questions there or you can follow, you know, what classes I'm coming up with and any news I put on there. And also if you're a, a follower of LinkedIn, you can connect with me on LinkedIn as well and send me messages and questions there. So there's a variety of methods that you can use to get answers to whatever questions that you have. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close off this video and let's start the next video on what do applications have to do with a CCNA.